1935, Danish scientist Henrik Dunn identified a fat-soluble compound that was necessary for blood to clot. He called this compound vitamin K, K for coagulation, clotting. We know today that there are actually several compounds, similar in structure, that have vitamin K activity, and we refer to them collectively with the name vitamin K. Without these compounds, our liver cannot build or activate many of the key proteins, including prothrombin, that are involved in the blood clotting cascade, the sequence of events that allow your blood to turn from liquid to solid at wound sites to prevent infections and hemorrhages. Without vitamin K, a little cut in your finger could turn into a deadly threat, because that little wound would never heal and drop after drop, you would eventually bleed to death. Luckily for us, vitamin K deficiency is extremely rare and unlikely in healthy individuals because bacteria in our gut are able to build some vitamin K, which can be subsequently absorbed and at least partially cover our needs. In food, vitamin K is mostly found in green leafy vegetables such as spinach, kale, cabbage, turnip greens, dark green lettuce, and then also broccoli, brussels sprouts, asparagus, peas, soybeans, and green beans. Vegetable oils, and particularly soybean oil, also provide some vitamin K. All foods of animal origin provide some vitamin K, although the only rich source of it is liver. Vitamin K is resistant to heat, so cooking doesn't damage it. The adequate intake for vitamin K is set at 90 micrograms for adult women and 120 micrograms for adult men. Although it's a fat-soluble vitamin, our body is not very good at storing it, but we easily get all we need and deficiencies are rare. The most frequent cases of vitamin K deficiency are due to fat malabsorption or extended use of antibiotics that kill the intestinal bacteria, although older adults eating little vegetables are more at risk. Excess vitamin K has no known symptoms of toxicity, thus no upper level has been set. Indeed, although vitamin K deficiency prevents adequate blood clotting, the reverse is not true. In other words, high levels of vitamin K do not promote blood clotting or cause exaggerated clotting responses. This is rather a consequence of atherosclerosis, and it increases the risk for heart attacks or strokes. These individuals often need to take blood-thinning medications such as warfarin, which acts precisely by inhibiting vitamin K clot-promoting action. People taking this medication must therefore control their vitamin K intake and make sure to keep it stable, because sudden variations would dangerously increase or decrease the effect of drug. It is mostly for this reason, and because deficiencies are extremely rare, that most multivitamin supplements contain little or no vitamin K. Vitamin K is not only necessary for clotting, it plays at least one other equally important role, and it involves bone health. Indeed, vitamin K is a necessary coenzyme in the synthesis of key bone proteins, including osteocalcin, which binds calcium, thus strengthening the bone structure. For this reason, vitamin K deficiency may independently lead to osteoporosis and bone fracture risk. There are no early deficiency symptoms of vitamin K. The only visible signs are blood hemorrhages and osteoporosis or bone fractures, both of which occur with prolonged and substantial deficiencies of vitamin K.